Good morning and thank you for joining us and off the press on Plus TV Africa. My name is Felicity Ezeweke and we take a look at the headlines in the papers with the help of our guest who today is policy analyst Ifi Oji. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, Felicity. Good morning to you. I hope you had a good night. I did, thank you. Happy to have you join us. All right, we start with the Punch newspaper this morning. The big one here is... Lagos begs doctors as enemy orders indefinite sit at home. Lagos state government to manage simple coronavirus cases as patients' residents. That's um, one for you. We also have the WHO Hills, Nigeria's response to Kanu massive community transmission. Not has 54% of cases, 70% new infections, not in governors. On the front page, you're looking at um, what looks like a fumigation exercise, decontamination, that's the word on the, under the picture. You can see a man at work on there. And just beneath it, you have customs get not to spend 623.7 million naira on computers. Two killed as rival cult groups clash in Quara. And then uh, we have uh, this one that says APC tackles Makende or your assembly over 20 billion naira loan. If we go to the top of the paper quickly, uh, you see the one on uh, Shamale's lawlessness will destroy APC. That's uh, deputy chairman and contractors block a Greek minister's office over debts. That's another one. Um, we can't reinstate demoted DG. F-I-I-R-O board tells ONU. All right, um, Ify, let's come to you. There are a couple of uh, big ones uh, this morning. Let's start with the NMA sit-at-home order. Uh, Felicity, you, uh, it's going to be a very tough one for us to um, navigate because this tussle between uh, NME and the government has been one that has been brewing for the last couple of months, last couple of years. It's a, an unending story of dissatisfaction with what they are being provided with by way of um, um, just any kind of uh, help and support. So I think that they, they basically, at this point, it, will be, uh, it, would, it wouldn't be very practical for us not to hear them at the very least and to ensure that they are brought back in full force because this is that this is one of those crucial times from even an economic standpoint that doctors uh, the, the weight of a doctor is is worth more than gold as they would say so this is a time for us to actually be pragmatic hear what they have to say uh negotiate and let us move forward and proceed so that we don't have a worse off crisis than we already do what worries you about the fact that these officers seem to be disobeying a direct order of the Inspector General of Police? We know that there is an update on that matter and a statement has been issued clearly stating out those um, they call essential workers who should be exempted uh, from the curfew. This is basically a, another example of a section of uh, government or section of uh, administration Taking a, a, a panadol for a headache that does not actually uh, that is not actually directly affecting them. So we need to be ensure that whatever the federal government has stated is what should be done. They shouldn't try to uh, overflow the issue. There is a reason why these uh, essential workers and even the media as well have given this special dispensation to carry on their work because what they are doing right now is essential work and work that affects every single one of us as Nigerians as stakeholders, especially during this uh, pandemic. Uh, the Kanu massive um, community transmission, WHO uh, hailing uh, the country on that one. Is that a commendation well deserved in your opinion? I do. I actually think it is. But one thing I was also want us to shy away from is always trying to look for some kind of, um, I don't know, kind of a validation outside Nigeria. We are the ones that are directly affected. Everything that happens to us is what we should. So we should internally find the validation internally. Yes, it's beautiful that WHO has has commended us in terms of how our fast response. Nigeria has never lacked in terms of uh, um, our um, 
of uh, our human resources and our capabilities and capacity in this country. And yes, it gives a boost to everyone that's, that's doing the thankless jobs that they're doing, but the long term, and I know that this pandemic is, is really taking its toll on us uh, from a, you know, even from a long term perspective, we need to find our validations internally as well. And that doesn't take away from anything that has been done heroically by these, uh, by everyone in, within the medical uh, profession that has contributed to this uh, success of, of at least trying to curtail the um, the virus in uh, the north. All right, let's move to the nation newspaper and take a look at it. Uh, we have uh, Lagos to admit only severe cases at isolation centers. Um, it has uh, three riders to that story. Patients with mild symptoms for home care. State records 199 of 284 new cases. And then we have virus spread fear grips security agents. Uh, there are some other um, quotes to that story on the front page. Uh, just above the masthead, uh, you're looking at the APC PDP issue, Ondo Edo polls guidelines. Uh, Oyegu, six, free primary. Wiki, oil workers make 60% of rivers virus cases. 292 Nigerians returned from Saudi Arabia, returnees in isolation. Uh, some cherry news from the day before. Um, let's take a look at the story also on the front page. Just be neat. Um, beside those pictures, uh, we have the Sultan counters governors over Idelfitri prayers. Um, we have Muswen backs rulers' position. And then you have a breakdown. The global figure of confirmed cases of coronavirus has now exceeded 5 million. Um, Ify, yes. what, what's, uh, what, what's your particular concern about this particular headline uh, on Lagos State? There seem to be no abating um, on the number of infections we are having. And uh, now it seems um, some would say they're becoming overwhelmed and they're now looking for um, you know, alternate location for isolation, patients' homes. How reasonable do you think that is in the uh, current circumstances, considering uh, the many factors that, that goes with home isolation? Well, I mean, this is something that has been seen in other parts of the world as well. It's, it's, not a, it's a quite unfortunate, to be honest. Um, I, I think that is what, even as... as uh, Controversial as the infectious disease uh, bill is, I think that's what it was trying to find a way to try and resolve in its in its uh, in its entirety. So giving giving the uh, DG, the Director General of CDC, of you know the powers to declare any kind of zone a an isolation center is I think one of the one, I think on under Section Seven or Fourteen. I can't remember quite uh, the exact uh, section that uh, that uh, cites this. But, it, but the, the message is actually very clear that Nigeria is trying to look for ways to uh, pragmatic ways to, to to try and sort of tone down the overwhelming nature of this pandemic. I know that at some point we don't have. If, if you're looking at figures where for every uh, 1,000 patients there's only one machine, one uh, respiratory machine, you can imagine what that's going to be like in the uh, coming uh, months down the line. And we're still, don't forget Felicity, we're still going up that trajectory in terms of our, uh, people affected by this disease. And I, I, I actually find it worrisome that we're not actually looking at ways to um, to focus on on uh, public health and public welfare, as opposed to just just focusing squarely on the um, economics of things. Okay, let's go to the Guardian newspaper and see what the headline is this morning. Uh, why government may lose COVID-19 battle by the UN. Uh, we also have a couple of writers. Uh, please provoke doctors uh, wrath over wrath rather over brute enforcement of curfew. Journalists, others on essential duties exempted, says IGP. Catholic body, FCT, defer on reopening of churches. Uh, before we go to other headlines, what's your position on the proposed reopening? Uh, some states have even started uh, things off already, opening uh, places of worship. Is that a really um, a good course of action now? I don't think it's a good course of action at all, Felicity. In fact, I think it, on the contrary, 
Uh, you look at a, a region in Nigeria, so like uh, the northern region, for example, where the 54, the 54, 54, sorry, 54 percent of the cases are from the north, and then you also find that 70 percent of the new cases are emanating from the north as well. And you have governors in Bauchi, governors in telling us that the mosques are going to be open and that they're going to practice social distancing. I mean, from a layman's perspective, we already know that that's not going to work. That's not a practical solution, and especially in, in places of worship like the mosque, where congregation, by its, by its uh, def mere definition, is what they are trying to do. So I think that it's actually a bit irresponsible for us not to look at this from a purely uh, practical point of view. We cannot have those uh, places place of worship open at the moment until people are completely and utter there's a procedure for these openings. And that would be only when the trajectory comes down and we flat and the curve is on its way down uh, from where we are seeing it at the moment. And this is where we're very far, I'm, unfortunately to say, we're very far from where, from that happening at the moment. So we need to really be very careful what we are doing here. And we, and we, hope, and we hope that we don't become architects of our own misfortune. Okay, let, let's see the uh, Buhari APC on the fire over alleged 48 billion dollar ministry scam. Uh, the PDP others seek probe into allegation. Uh, groups fall to move against permanent secretary. Contractors picket office um, over uh, 17 billion naira debt. Mm. There are other headlines as well. We have this one, adjustment it to that. Uh, um, a P PDP, I mean, uh, Buhari APC on the fire. We have, you can't coerce opposition media to be pro-government. CUPP tells Gwajabia Mila. I guess it's still on the issue of alleged bribe. Um, FG okays 2.2 billion naira to retool Anambra Customs Plateau University. Fresh crisis rocks APC over choice of Bulama as scribe, others. Robbers on rampage in Lagos traffic. Um, I know you want to take on the Lagos traffic uh, situation. Are you surprised there is a resurgence? Of course not. I mean, we're commercial. Uh, we know we're a very commercial uh, city in Lagos. We, in fact, the, the general uh, exchange and commercial exchange that happens in Nigeria, we happen to be at the right at the center of the fulcrum of all that all that commercial activity in Nigeria. So it, it does not surprise me at all that that is what has what as, that is what we've reverted back to um, with the relaxation of the uh, lockdown and relaxation of the. Uh, uh, the lockdown, as, as Lagos State has put it, and even from the federal government as well. So we need to just make sure that the policing in terms of actual, not the essential services, that, mind you, those of us that don't have essential work to do, that can afford to work from home, we need to make sure that this will, uh, and this will make, that this will, this will en enable us find better ways and be agents to curtail the disease on our on individually as stakeholders as well. Okay, let's uh, see what this day, um, business day actually has for us this morning. Employee pensions at risk as lockdown job losses threaten remittances. That's the big one there. And on the sidebar, we have COVID-19. On the testing, PPE shortage and danger patients, medical personnel at loot. And then inside the papers, you will see this one that says, doctors withdraw services to protest police harassment in Lagos. Coronavirus leaves Nigeria with no alternative to critical infrastructure spending. Uh, those are some of the headlines on the Business Day newspaper. Uh, let's start with the screamer about employee pensions at risk as lockdown job losses threaten remittances. First, there are three sides to this particular story. It's actually a huge saga when you think about it in long, in a, you know, in a, in a, from a bird's eye perspective. The first part of this uh, headline tells you very clearly about what what the uh, the um, what the um, the multilateral institutions call social protection, which basically means that the first line of attack when you're trying to uh, uh, ensure that uh, protect our economy is that um, we make sure that we keep as much, retain as many jobs as possible. And if that is the case, how do we do that? We do that by making sure that uh, you know, and, and one of the first indicators of how much, um, how many jobs that we have actually kept is the fact that pensions are actually, actually not going to be uh, in jeopardy. So another another angle I'm looking at this as elsewhere is also from the from the multilateral, multilateral point of view as well. So the multilaterals have given us these monies. I know we had the IMF uh, over three weeks ago commit to uh, the uh, special drawdown rights. Nigeria actually. 
uh, exercising their special drawdown, drawdown rights, drawing rights rather, with the International Monetary Fund. And uh, with one of the conditions precedent for that drawdown is that um, for, for drawing, for taking up that money, uh, is that, mind you, it's 100% of what we're actually entitled to. So we have no other recourse once this money runs out. But one of the conditions that they've given us is that we make sure that we find a way to increase taxes and to lower our spending. And one of the, and, and, and another way they also wanted us to do is look for um, additional ways of um, income to meet our, our repayment, uh, re repayment responsibilities. And one of the only ways you can do that is through bond issuance. And, and the income that we're getting from uh, pensions is one of the only income that we have in Nigeria that is almost uh, untouched because of the nature of what it is. Other sectors are in, in deep trouble, but for whatever reason it is, our income from pensions is the only stable income that we, that we can actually rely on. And that is why it is particularly important that we, we ensure that we preserve this as much as we can. All right, let's look at the on the testing. PPE shortages, these are issues that are not peculiar to Nigeria, but it is recurrent, it keeps coming up, and the medical personnel are really concerned about their safety. Uh, what more do you think uh, the government can do in this instance? There is a particular focus on loot. Uh, what more do you think um, can be done? It may be, it may be the, the cost has bought it from the uh, stable in terms of trying to find a way for us to uh, manufacture these locally, especially with all the challenges we have in the manufacturing sector in Nigeria. I know that uh, we are trying desperately to uh, bring them into Nigeria, and uh, I know we've been successful to some degree, but we need to find a quick solution. Any other, any other manufacturers are, are around, be they garments or the apparel industry, or even other kinds of sanitary wear, we need to sort of rally the troops at this point. I, I, I keep for actually in war, tactical, tactical war, and ensure that these things are treated with, with the utmost um, priority that, that it deserves in Nigeria. And that way we can ensure that maybe some of these things are ameliorated. All right, let's move to this day. Uh, the big one here is uh, Sultan urges Muslims to comply with social distancing um, as govs relax restrictions. There are plenty of riders to that story. Let's see how many we can take. Again, IG directs police top brass to exempt journalists, others, and essential services from curfew. Uh, that issue has been uh, talked about. Uh, COVID-19 cases increases. Uh, we have 80% of Nigeria's cases don't need hospital care, says epi epidemiologist. Uh, we also have um, the one that says a Catholic act bishop ask FG to consider herbal remedies. These are some um, headlines on the front page of this day newspaper. Uh, just beneath those plenty uh, riders, we have Reddington crashes cost of open heart surgery in Nigeria. We do know that they had a very successful one recently, even in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. If we flip to uh, the top of the okay, just before we go to the top of the paper, there is the one on court declines to stop deliberation on infectious disease bill. And then let's flip to the top now and see what's there. Fact shares 2.6 trillion naira in four months as revenues slump. Uh, that's another story for interest um, that might interest you to go uh, read details. Uh, at 20.89 billion liters, Nigeria's petrol imports hit six year high. Ify, yes, Felicity, um, in closing thoughts, uh, let me allow you to make a choice from the many headlines we have on this day newspaper. It's a lot coming at me this morning, but I'll try and, take them one, and tackle them one at a, one at a time. Right. The first, I think, around the, uh, the that, that's to be expected in terms of uh, the 20.89 20 um, billion liters that uh, Nigeria has been ported. Yeah. We are literally functioning as a a warring country right now. This is what you do when you, you try and get as much uh, stock in as much as possible just for the rainy day. This is what you do in a, in a war crisis. And this is where this is the kind of level we are operating in Nigeria at the moment. Um, also regarding, um, I think you also mentioned, uh, what was the second one you mentioned, Felicity? Um, there's the Sultan urging Muslims to comply with uh, social distancing as government relaxes. And then uh, there is one I know that will interest you. Uh, fact shares 2.6 trillion naira in four months as revenue slump. So the last one you said again was, sorry, Felicity, I, I, I didn't quite hear the last one, the last headline. Uh, 
fact that um, Federal Allocation uh, Commission shares 2.6 trillion Naira uh, in four months as revenue slump. And then we also have the big one, that's the screamer. Sultan urges Muslims to comply with social distancing as govs relax restrictions. So, I mean, uh, I know that, I don't know if it's already out, but there's supposed to be an Economic Sustainability Committee report that's due out uh, sometime this week from the Presidential Task Force around the Economic Sustainability Committee. And I know that one of the things that we talked about, uh, they're basically trying to co bring together different uh, ministries that are crucial in terms of finding a way for us to um, uh, hedge around the losses that we may have or sustained from uh, the COVID uh, impact, the impact of COVID in Nigeria. So uh, one of the things I know that, well, one of the conditions precedent that was attached again to uh, lending or the lending or inst instrument that was given to us in Nigeria was uh, the fact that we need to ensure that we spend less and we raise taxes, as I said earlier on. But one thing that I think that we are not actually looking at in, in, in clear detail is the fact that um, a lot of these, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these um, conditions or conditionality, as the, the jargon would say in the multilateral institution world, is that we haven't actually looked at uh, sustaining. Uh, we, have, we haven't actually looked at sustaining these um, our position basically, and that's going to be tricky for us because under under the uh, conditions present that we given that we gave to the IMF regarding our lending and any kind of help that we're going to get, we need to make sure that we are stay, staying in accordance to what they have asked us to do. And this obviously is moving away from what they've asked us to do regarding the uh, giving out monies to the states. And the money is specifically for us to ensure that we are able to tackle from a federal perspective the issues that we're having. And this will actually give us and put us at, at a deficit if we continue to do it, to move or proceed in this manner. All right, Ify, uh, that's where we're going to wrap things up this morning. Thank you very much for uh, sharing your thoughts on uh, all the headlines and providing us with some insight. Hello, thank you very much for listening. The pleasure is mine. And that's how we wrap things up this morning. And off the press, we take a look at all the headlines to try and make sense of it. This doesn't stop you from going to read in depth all the stories that interest you this morning. I will see you later. My name is Felicity Ezewike.